Welcome to Measurably Better Learning, the podcast built for learning and development professionals. Whether you're an instructional designer, L&D professional, or corporate leader, get ready for insights and ideas that will transform your approach to learning, training, and development. So let's dive in. Johnny Hamilton, we are really excited to have you on this podcast. Uh, Of all the people in the world who can speak intelligently to an almost unintelligible topic of AI, (laughs) um, you are the man. Would you give us just the the 50,000-foot Johnny Hamilton story, please? Sure thing. Um, I've been in learning innovation for over two decades. Um, I've worked for large corporations and also started my own uh, entrepreneurial businesses a couple of times. I've worked with a variety of different companies and looked at augmented virtual reality, micro learning, and the latest things now um, have been generative AI. So that's been um, a, a major focus of mine and put both my feet into the pool. You certainly have. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you've, you've, yeah. I mean, this is, you're, you're as, as knowledgeable as, as there is. Um, so as we, as we think about this and Miriam and I talk about this all the time, right? The possibilities of AI, the possibilities, the possibility, the possibilities are, are truly. It's overwhelming. Yeah. And, and I mean, I really can't think of anything else where I know this many areas where something is yeah has happened and or something is possible how do you how do you hone in on something johnny where, where do you say okay that right there is the thing we ought to be thinking about and and talking about right now uh so when i ask you that question what pops in your mind like the first place of focus should be what the first place of focus is starting with a framework Um, And really, I have a framework that I've been using called Learn, Practice, Apply. And when you're talking about upskilling people in in the workforce, that's really what the the question is. So you're asking, where should we look at an AI? I would actually ask a different question. What kind of problems are we going to be solving? Hmm. And the problem to solve is, well, the best problem to solve with AI is... How do we upskill our workforce? And within the framework of learn, practice, apply, we don't have to do learning, but it's the practicing of that skill. That's where AI can really help out in addition to applying those skills within the flow of work. Can you give us a, so the how, how, how does that work? I, I, I happen to know there's a, there's a project that you're working on. I don't know how much you can even say about it, um, but, but. Can you give us uh, maybe make it more generic, but but talk about how that ability to practice using AI in what feels very live, what ought to feel very live. Um, it, it's the responsive stuff. I know you're working on with one of our clients as well. Um, how, uh, what does that look like, Johnny? What, what do you have in mind for that? Yeah, something kind of practical. Yeah. Look in the frame of soft skills and. In soft skills, you can be taught, this is how to have a difficult conversation. This is how to show empathy. This is how to go through these five steps to have emotional intelligence. You can learn those things, but then you don't say, well, I've been upskilled. I know how to do it and I do it in my work. What you need is a safe place to practice and hone that skill so that you have increased fluency Um, and performance. And so you need to practice it. And a large language model is a way that you can basically have an unlimited branching scenario to practice those skills in a more realistic and safe environment. So AI is responsive. AI is listening to what you say and generating a response. And um, that's going to create dissonance Oh, for sure. Right. Yeah. That's gonna, that, that's gonna feel very much. It 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 has some of the real emotion. Yeah. Of a live conversation, especially when maybe you're having a hard conversation. It's real feedback. I mean, real time. Yeah. Authentic. Yeah. Like you have to evaluate somebody's work or something. I mean, if if AI can feed you back, and there's probably uh, like a cool and hot meter on it too, right, Johnny? Where you see you can make it more and less uncomfortable. Is that is that technologically accurate? Absolutely. So. In a large language model, think of it as 
what we've been able to do before has been create branching scenarios. But then you're limited to the four or 10 specific yeah, outcomes that you have. It's a, yeah. Here with a large language model, it's you're able to create experiences that have an unlimited branching scenario. You feed the scenario um, and have the different variables to put in there. And then you can have a more natural conversation and guide where it's going within particular boundaries. This is more closely related to an actual conversation that you're having with somebody. Yeah. And because it's using a large language model in the back end, you can get immediate feedback, specific and at scale. And that's the real difference because you can learn and practice how to have a conversation and have a coach or a mentor or small groups or role play, but that's time intensive and people intensive. Here we can do this at scale so you can get to greater proficiency through practice in a safe way that's much closer to a real conversation. Thank you. We are, uh, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, Johnny, we're going to talk about um, what probably most of our listeners want to talk about tools, which ones to use, which ones not to use. And uh, that we look forward to that. So we'll be right back. Imagine a world where every training session, every learning module, and every translated document is aligned with your company's unique goals and global ambitions. Welcome to Ingenuity, where we don't just talk about elevating your corporate learning, we make it happen. At Ingenuity, we understand the heart of your business is its people. That's why we specialize in creating custom learning solutions and translation services that are not just effective, but are designed specifically for your business's global needs. Let us show you how learning cannot be just better, but measurably better, with solutions tailored just for you. Learn more in the description below. All right, well, welcome back, everyone. And Johnny, I think uh, you know, my bent is always practical. You and I even had this conversation the other day a little bit. I, I think in the world we live in, everyone dabbles at some point or another actually using the technology tools, the software, and then over time, maybe we're not as involved as we used to be. But a lot of our listeners are curious what are the best tools to actually design and build and work in AI? And what does that look like? Absolutely. So it's a great question. And that's what usually comes at top of mind for everybody. What right. can I actually use? Right. And so I mentioned a framework before of the learn, practice, apply, which is a framework from my baseline builder. Another framework from my baseline builder is here, near, and far. And that can help frame this conversation. So what tools do we use? Well, let's start off with what is here. And what's here is what's known, currently available, and you basically know what you'll be able to get a result out of that. So for learning professionals, that is ChatGPT, that is BARD, that is um, Dolly for uh, images. You can use those things to... Um, and, and basically start exploring what you can do with those. Make self-assessment uh, questions. You can uh, take source material from your subject matter experts and make an outline, make a video script, mm -hmm. a, a variety of things of that nature. There's, there's a sandbox element to this. Yeah. Right? There's, there's a tinkering thing. There's it, It's it's a strange tech because it's, it's there isn't this, like, here's the workflow. You have to follow it exactly. Right. It's very The way to learn it is to go play with it. It is, it is a go play. This is yeah. where the profession is going. And if you're not using this, start playing with it and start playing with the free stuff because that's out there and you can get some value directly out of it. That's what's here. If you take a look at, well, what's near? Well, that's taking something and you need to, um, it has a little inherently, it has a little more risk. It has more time. You don't know exactly what it's going to look like. You don't know exactly what the output would be. Um, there might be some money that you need to put into to get something like that going. So there are some tools out there that have a lot of value. Um, SecondNature.ai is a is an example of that where you can have a conversation. There's an avatar in there. It's a paid service. Um, you could, in your own organization, Get some software engineers if you have that in your organization or um, 
get a vendor that knows how to use some of this ingenuity as a vendor like that, that you can leverage ex outside expertise and to build a project. But you're building something that's familiar and you're adding a twist. Yeah. So there's minimizing the risk there. I, I, I think one that's occurring to me too, before you go on to, you know, here and there in the far, far part, the, the, the near thing in uh, just in the uh, last number of weeks, honestly, mixing and matching, um, like tacking one piece of software onto another piece of software and having them work from different perspectives or different skill sets. It's it's a bizarre way to think it is. they actually have skill sets. Right. But they do have skill sets. And what happens when you line them up in the right work order, what you start with is an idea and what you end with is astounding. Not one of them does all the things that you want it to do, but mixed together. So yeah, I, maybe that's a... Maybe that's a near. Talk talk about far. Because you don't know what the output is going to be. Something right. that's here, you know what you're going to do and you know what you're going to get. Something that's near is you're going to tinker with it, try some new workflows, do something new. And it could be on the back end of how do we develop something using an AI-enabled tool, or it could be customer-facing or learner-facing, mm -hmm. which is here's the this is what they're actually interacting with. Far is something that is a year or two out that if you wanted to move into it would require substantial investment. It would be very risky because it's never been done before. That would be something like having an AI enabled uh, avatar um, that, that, that speaks to you in real time. There's nothing like that out there now, but you could start building and spending a lot of time and effort and money building something like that if it meets your business case. So when you're looking at a tool, look at, is it here, near, or far? Is it something you want to, that you can work on now in this this quarter? Is it something that's two quarters out? Or is it something that's a year or two out? That helps you frame that. Yeah, yeah that's a that's a great framework, a great way to, and I, I can speak from experience. We've shared that with clients a few times who come and are just excited and overwhelmed and want to jump right in. And it's a really great way to help them frame their thoughts they're excited, but they don't know. They don't know what about. exactly. It's right. Exciting, right. I'm not sure why. Right. And not sure what this thing does yet. Yeah. That's a great framework. Um, Johnny, last last little question, last thought. Um, there's an element to this stuff that's scary, and I don't mean in an apocalyptic way. It's scary as to whether or not this thing's going to take my job yeah. or your job. Yeah. Speak to that if you can, because there, there are people, I mean, there are people in, in L&D that are, that are going to feel an impact from, from AI. Um, wh what do you say to those people? Number one, for your own professional development, get in the game. Start practicing and playing and getting familiar with these tools. Number two, AI is good at key aspects, but is not good for other aspects. So what this will enable you to do is to get to an 80% draft faster so that yeah. you do that 20% at the final end to refine and to make sure and to ask the right questions to get everything started. Right. So it takes away much of the grunt work that could be done and allows you more time for to be creative. However, if you stay in the, I'm just going to keep doing my job the way it is, you are inherently at risk. If you learn how to do these new tools and designs and strategies, you are going to position yourself for success to continue to add value to yourself and to the business. Perfect. Well, Johnny, uh, Miriam and I are really grateful yeah. for your time and your friendship and your expertise. So thank you, and uh, we wish you a good day. Before we wrap up the show, if you're looking to dive deeper, we've got tons of free downloads, L&D resources, and details about upcoming webinars that you won't want to miss. They're found in the episode description. Plus, if you ever want to chat with either one of us, now's your chance. You can find links in the episode description to connect directly with Miriam or me. We're here to answer your questions and to discuss all things learning and development. And speaking of questions, we love hearing from you. Whether it's a question or a comment or a topic you're curious about, or if you just want to join the conversation, 
drop us a comment on your favorite social media channel. Your input shapes our shows. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform. It's the best way to ensure you never miss out on our latest episode. We're excited to continue to transform learning into a measurable success with you. Until next time.